Shalom from Israel, friends. This is Daniel again with another episode of Eye on Israel. Today, we're going to take a little quiz. No, you don't have to go get your pencils and papers and be prepared to write anything. I'm going to do all, all of it for you. You just simply have to watch, listen, and think a little bit, okay? So I'm going to read some quotations from a document, if you will, all right? And then after I'm finished reading the quotations, I'm going to ask you to take a guess on who wrote them. Okay, so let's just jump right into this, all right? Peace, peace. They say there, there is no peace. These days, everyone is speaking about peace in the Middle East and the peace process. But so far, these are simply words. The reality is one of Israeli occupation of Palestinian territories, deprivation of our freedom, and all that results from this situation. <clears throat> That's quote number one. Next, Israeli settlements ravage our land in the name of God and in the name of force, controlling our natural resources, including water and agricultural land, thus depriving hundreds of thousands of Palestinians and constituting an obstacle to any political situation. Religious liberty is severely restricted. The freedom of access to holy places is denied under the pretext of security. Now, I'm not going to get into commenting on each and every one of these quotes because, as you're hearing, most of it is balderdash, okay? Pure balderdash. Okay, the next quote, Refugees are also part of our reality. Most of them are still living in camps under difficult circumstances. They have been waiting for their right of return generation after generation. What will be their fate? Palestinians within the state of Israel, who have also suffered an historical injustice, are too waiting to enjoy their full rights and equality like all other citizens in the state. Let me read a couple more here. In the face of this reality, Israel justifies its actions as self-defense, including occupation, collective punishment, and all forms of reprisals against the Palestinians. In our opinion, this vision is a reversal of reality. Yes, there is a Palestinian resistance to the occupation. However, if there were no occupation, there would be no resistance, no fear, and no insecurity. Hmm. Okay, how about the security barrier that Israel had to put up to protect its citizens from being murdered by Palestinians? Quote, the separation wall erected on Palestinian territory, a large part of which has been confiscated for this purpose, has turned our towns and villages into prisons. Gaza, especially after the cruel war Israel launched against it during 2008, December of 2008 and January 2009. They continue to live in inhumane conditions. And finally, we know that certain theologians in the West try to attach a biblical and theological legitimacy to the infringement of our rights. Thus, the promises according to their interpretation have become a menace to our very existence. Okay, that's the end of the quotes, right? <laughs> now, take a guess who wrote the document that I'm reading from. And I'm going to put some names on the screen right now. Take a look. All right, do you have a guess? Hazard a guess? Was it the Palestinian Authority? Is it Hamas? Is it the Palestinian Parliament? Is it Mahmoud Abbas himself, the one who says he'll never accept a Jewish state of Israel, no matter what? <clears throat> well, would it surprise you if it's none of these? Nope, not a one of them. Now, 
I'm going to surprise you even more because I'm going to put the image of the organization on the screen where these quotes came from. Take a look. My friends, the uh, World Council of Churches is an umbrella Christian organization which boasts of somewhere between five and six hundred million members, hundreds of different Christian denominations are part of the World Council of Churches. The document that I read from and is called the Kairos Palestine document, and here's an image of it directly from the World Council of Churches website. So you can find that online if you choose. Now let me read you a list, a very short list by the way, of some of the member denominations of the World Council of Churches. American Baptist Church, USA. Anglican Church, New Zealand, Japan, Australia, Canada. Baptist Union Church in Denmark, Hungary, New Zealand, and Australia. Disciple of Christ Church in Canada and U.S. Church of England, Church of Greece, Church of Ireland, Church of Norway, Church of Scotland, Church of Sweden. The Evangelical Lutheran Church in Austria and Germany and the general Austro-Hungarian uh, area. The Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada. In the U.S., the Evangelical Lutheran Church. In Denmark. Hungary, Jordan, Israel, Finland, and Italy. The Greek Orthodox Patriarch Church in Jerusalem. Methodist churches worldwide, including the U.S. National Baptist Church, U.S. National Baptist Convention. Presbyterian Church, USA. Scottish Episcopal Church, and United Church of Christ. Now, these are just a few of the hundreds of denominational members of the World Council of Churches. My friends, this is very troubling because the verbiage, if you rewind and take a listen to what I read you, the verbiage, does that sound like church material to you? No, not at all. That sounds like something that a bunch of politicians sat down and hammered out. And those politicians, by the way, are anti-Israel. You could tell by everything that they wrote. I mean, listen to this one quote. I want to read this to you once again. This is incredible. We know that certain theologians in the West tried to attach a biblical and theological legitimacy to the infringement of our rights. Thus, the promises according to their interpretation have become a menace to our very existence. <laughs> well, what, what interpretations is this document referring to? Well, I would venture to guess that they're referring to the scripture itself which talks about the fact that God gave this land to who? Whom? Did he give it to Muslims? No. Did he give it to the erstwhile Palestinians? No. Who did he give it to? He gave it to his people. He gave it to the Jewish people as an everlasting inheritance for all generations, for all time. This is repeated in Scripture time and time and time again. And so here you have, quote-unquote, Christians putting a document together, okay, and literally saying with this verbiage that theologians in the West who attach a biblical and theological legitimacy to this 
have become a menace. A menace. So these Christians are literally saying, if you read the Bible and you see where God has given the land to the Jewish people, as far as these Christians are concerned, that viewpoint has become a menace. What, what, what kind of Christians are we talking about here, my friends? I, I personally don't know any. Maybe you do. But this is part of what's going on within the overall body today. And so I'm asking you, one, now that you know about this, please, if you have any questions, drop me a line. I'm happy to communicate with you about this, to share whatever information that you might need in order to help you if you enter into discussions with friends or what have you that have a, quote, pro-Palestinian point of view. My friends, are we looking at what is unfolding before our very eyes through scriptural, spiritual, godly eyes, or are we looking at it through earthly, carnal, material eyes? And if you are, or you know someone who is looking at these critical unfolding events through carnal, earthly, material eyes, pray for them. Pray for them. Because these people are living under a delusion. Satan has gotten into them, and they have been bought off, and they want their earthly reward rather than align themselves with the Word of God. Well, my friends, I hope that this little quiz, if you will, uh, and I'm assuming that most of you probably didn't guess where these words came from. No problem. You didn't fail the test, okay? So there won't be any failing grade coming. But if this and other messages that we share with you bless you, uh, please consider going to our website, blessisraelnetwork.com. Uh, our ministry is 100% dependent on the donations from wonderful people such as yourselves. And please consider partnering with us. Drop us a letter, an email, uh, get on our mailing list. But uh, thank you so much, and I hope this has blessed you. God bless you now from Israel. Shalom.